Climate change may seem too large a problem to tackle, but it's a treatable problem. It won't be easy, and the longer we delay, the more difficult and expensive it will be. There are two facets to combating climate change. Adaptation includes strategies such as growing different crops that are suited to a different climate, building walls to hold back the rising seas, or moving people to safer locations. Adaptation is not optional because of the greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere. But there is still a choice. Will the adaptation be planned, or will it involve strife and large loss of life? Reducing greenhouse gases, the mitigation part of addressing climate change, is necessary if we're going to limit the damage. Here is the way one team of Princeton researchers sees it. Our current path is toward doubling CO2 emissions in the next 50 years, with even greater increases beyond that. In order to get off this path, we need to find ways to keep emissions constant for the next 50 years and then reduce them during the second half of the century. This would limit atmospheric CO2 to about 570 parts per million, still greater than the roughly 380 parts per million in the atmosphere today, but enough to avoid the worst predicted consequences. As you can see, there are many ways society can approach the struggle to reduce carbon emissions, but there is no single solution. Many of the strategies mentioned are the realm of governments, and the ever-growing world population means that we'll have to work that much harder to reduce global emissions. But on an individual level, there are many things one can do to make a difference. The IPCC is not finished with its work. A fifth assessment report is planned for 2013 to 2014. Climate models also continue to improve. Oceanographers, for example, want to incorporate massive ocean eddies in models. Other scientists want to better model rain and snow's effects on water supplies to help predict droughts and floods. And we need to learn more about what drives the giant ice sheets of the world, how much farther they are likely to melt or slide, and how that will affect sea level. Scientists are also working on regional models that can predict the effects of climate change locally. That information could be used, for example, to decide whether to put funding toward more firefighters in the West or toward research on how open summertime waters in the Arctic will affect national security. Scientists are working to produce better data sets from both surface observations and satellites. For example, we need to get a better handle on methane to improve our understanding of its contribution to global warming. Ultimately, better data will help produce better model results, and many scientists are now working toward a climate information system that can tell us more precisely how, where, and why the climate is changing, and help us decide how best to respond. In short, the puzzle is already complete enough to know we need to take action, but climate scientists will continue working to improve the picture. These efforts will provide more pieces of the puzzle to help decision makers target adaptation and mitigation actions to preserve our future.